So, so from um, now on onwards, all the speakers will be on Zoom. And that makes it even more <coughs> challenging. So given that problem we have, it will be very useful if we keep our questions to a bare minimum. No, 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 I just happened to turn my head and you caught my eye, that's all it is. Um, yeah, that will be helpful. Okay. Can we um, get the first Roger Booth? Roger, are you there? Roger, I'm over. There. Am I ready to go? Yep. Okay. When I was a teenager in the 1960s, what is now known as the Kabaddi Coast, was made up of villages along the beach, especially Paikakariki, Waikanae and Otaki, have only been linked in the Kabaddi Coast for 50 years. We are a very young district. The character of the district, the distinctive identity is its villages, and long may this remain. The village communities have also been distinctively different, and long may this remain also. The current electoral structure based on its villages was absolutely right when it was set up, and it's just as right today. I'm aware that KCDC had a requirement to conduct a six year review, but there was no requirement to propose a change of structure. My submission is signed by four councillors and two community board members from the council four terms back, which was led by Jenny Ryan and myself as mayor and deputy mayor. The way we used our structure made good use of the contribution of democratically elected community board members. They were our consultants about each village. Jenny and I attended every community board meeting and the two of us, the chair and the council rep, then brought back that opinion into council discussions. In my submission, I list a number of the matters, concerns and issues the separate villages debated with us. They're very different for each village. The mayor, the deputy mayor and the district-wide councillors can't have an in-depth knowledge of all these villages. If the same use of community boards is not currently happening, and I suspect it isn't, you don't throw away the democratically elected boards and leave the ability to present local knowledge to just one councillor per village submerged in the council of 11. You don't throw it away, you fix it. Community board grants have been a hugely successful way of finding the right organisations and causes for the council to support by small grants. But there's a huge difference between democratically elected community boards doing this and non-democratic committees appointed by council employees. Please read our submission to see what community boards are able to do. Discard any intentions to do away with our very special community boards. And if you need a hand to get them operating effectively, call us in. Thank you. Right, um, questions, Councillor Holbrook. Your mobile. <laughs> it's, it's working, it's working. Kia ora, Roger. Thank you so much for your submission. So I've looked through this list of, um, of, of achievements over the years from community boards, and I can actually only see a few of those which um, actually were instigated, supported, or developed by the community boards. Um, and there are some missing that were um, in Paikakariki, but none of these on the list actually was something that we had much involvement in at community board level. And um, I'm not sure about the other ones, but um, for instance, promotion of Namanu, the board doesn't have very much to do with that. So um, could you just highlight a couple of these where you see the community board had a crucial and meaningful role? 
In, in terms of initiation, I'm, I, I didn't say that all these things were initiated by the community board at all. I said that all these things are the sort of things that the, the community board keeps an eye on and when, the, when it comes up for discussion, when these things emerge, and they can be brought up by the community boards, that, um, that the community board is involved in the discussion and they are the people in the community who know about them. Um, as an example, um, the trains in, in Raumati Beach. Um, it just so happened that I came from a council in Havelock North where I was experienced in this area and they grabbed me when I came in. Um, you might recall I was actually first on the community board um, and, the, and, and that was one of them that actually and it was initiated through the community board process, followed through by the community board process and what, what was set up in, the, in that, um, commu that, that train set work was doubled uh, as, as a result of that. Um, and there's been an eye kept on it since that. That, that was an example of, of one of those things. Um, another one was the um, was the um, the, the mosquitoes um, um, that that emerged in in Raumati South. Um, that was brought up by Trevor Daniel, who was a community board board member, um, and it ended up with the appropriate things. I, I mean, those are two examples, and and I know because I was at all the meetings, Janet. So I went through all the processes, and I know how many times these things were part of that part of that discussion. I didn't say that they were initiated in my submission. I said that they kept an eye on them, and were able to discuss them and bring that uh, that material back to the um, to the bigger council. Right. Thanks, Roger. That's really helpful. Councillor Pravanov. Sorry, yep. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Mayor. I just, a point of clarification. Um, so, Councillor Holbro has brought up about um, promotion of Namano. So, before she started working for them, um, the Waikanae Community Board did reach out to Namano and got them to put a submission into a long term plan that they would not have done if they had not done that. Thank you. There have been a lot of Namano issues over the years. I mean, it's. it's, it's um, uh, and, I, and at the time in which I was a community board representative, I actually helped um, um, fund. I, I led the fundraising. I was chairman of the fundraising committee for the last of uh, those presentations that they used to have um, at Namanu. Um, and my political um, link was very much associated with that and helped the, helped the publicity. Right. Um, no other questions. So thank you very much, Roger, for your submission. Thank you. Right. The next. Submit is Joanna Poole. I'm going to meet him. Joanna, are you there? Yes, I am. You, Good morning. Kia ora. Yep, where are you going? So you're ready for my submission? Yep. Am I on? Okay. Look, thank you very much. Um, as I've provided a reasonably extensive written submission, I'd like to highlight three particular concerns I have. One was the process council has used in developing the representation option that council has put forward for consultation and with the preferred option itself. So these three things are the legitimacy of the research used to develop the options, the weighting given to community of interest to Otaki and Paikokariki as opposed to Waikanae or compared to Waikanae and Umu, and the inconsistency council has applied to the treatment of the plus or minus variance rule. So starting with research, Contrary to council argued defence and justification of the research used in this process, and I'd like you to refer to the paragraph 37 of the 2021 representation review decision on initial process paper presented at the 26th of August 2021 council meeting, qualitative research does not con substitute for statistically quantitative research. This is what that paragraph says. In keeping, or one of the sentences in that paragraph, in keeping with core design research principles, the quality of engagement and information received was prioritised over the quantity of people involved 
to ensure it was not a tick the box exercise. This is completely disrespectful to democracy and ratepayers. 150 people or participants in a so called research study out of a population of 57,000 is not statistically representative. As a frequent user of quality research, the so called research used by Council was not fit for purpose. The purpose of qualitative research is to inform quantitative research. If not, qualitative research at the most can only be considered subjective. The next point I'd like to talk about is the weight in given to Otaki and Paikokuriki. Curiously and confoundingly, and without supporting evidence, Waikanae and Parara Parara Umu, who have well-defined communities of interest on the basis of historical, geographic, social and functional grounds have been judged to have lesser communities of interest than Otaki and Paikokuriki. I wonder how many of the 150 participants in Empathy's self-selected interviews came from Otaki or Paikokuriki. I say no more. Interestingly, to get around any notions of community of interest, Council is proposing to remove all references to the current historical and geographic ward names and move to generic names. I'd next like to move on to the plus or minus 10% variance rule. This is a classic case of one rule for some, another rule for others. While the variance below or over in the Otaku and Waikanae wards respectively has been used for justification for boundary changes, refer to the paragraph four in that same paper I mentioned earlier, where, counts, where the L local government commission asked council to consider the appropriateness, appropriateness of the Waikanae Otaki boundary. An option has been presented that completely demolishes a community of interest, Waikanae, and doesn't fix the problem of overrepresentation in Otaki ward. Instead, Council proposes an option that essentially retains the status quo in the Otaki ward, going from a minus 13.53 percentage variance to a minus 11.92 percent variance. It is interesting that Council further justifies a special case for overrepresentation in the Otaki ward. Again, the same report, refer paragraph 69. To quote, the paper. The community found feedback found that while there was unity within the community, there was a sense of disenfranchisement when it comes to local council, further supporting the rationale for non-compliance with the fair representation rule. If fit for purpose quantitative research had been conducted, it is likely council would have discovered this was true for all wards, not just a special case for Otaki. To conclude, in the face of being represented with an option that defies logic and evidence, one might be forgiven for, giving, for thinking the options presented to councillors have been predetermined. They are far from imaginative, representative, and most important of all, democratic. It is clear that council has allowed itself to be led by premises and options promoted by empathy design, and note that it's design, not research in its name. And council officers options that have no statistical reliability and are not representative of the community it serves. By using poor process, council is creating divisions in a community where unity, not disunity, is required more than ever. Thank you. Um, questions? Councillor Provenal. Yeah. <laughs> Three strikes, she's out, eh? <laughs> Through you, Mr Chair. Thank you, Joanna, for your detailed submission and for speaking today. So um, I just want to ask a question in relation to the, um, the, uh, the, oh, the um, the quantitative research that was done was done, and I and it sounds like you have some experience in this this year. So I'm just in this area. So I'm just um, interested to know your thoughts on the, I suppose, the divergence and what was um, found from the first work to what we're hearing now. Well, I mean. <laughs> The research, I mean, there's a whole lot of statements. There are 100, from what I can understand and see, and it was through markets, um, people who were self-selected went into market stalls at the various community markets, 
um, were interviewed on the street, uh, perhaps were given a survey, and it seems that council deemed that some people who don't like to speak up for themselves should have more representation in the surveys than others. Um, have given statements, and I don't know quite, because we haven't seen the questionnaires, um, how this was done, but then they were given uh, em emphasis and and they were sort of, they were pulled out and plucked out to support certain, I don't know, theories or views that council, council lawyers, council officers, Wanted? I, I don't know. There, there's just absolutely no logical evidence in the in the proposals that have been put forward, and certainly using that 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 research, qualitative research at best informs quantitative. If you only interview 150 people, <laughs> that's not representative of 57,000 people. And as I've heard other submitters make. This has come as a huge surprise to most people. I mean, I consider myself pretty observant of what's going on in, in the Coverty Coast District. And when this came out, it was absolutely news to me. Um, I, I certainly hadn't been approached. Have you got um, another I don't question? remember I have, being invited yes. to participate in any, any research. Councillor Pravnov, I've got another question. Yeah. Thank you, Joanna. So, are you, so I know that KCDC worked well with the external company. Are you aware if KCDC chose the people who were um, interviewed in depth and were part of the workshops? Uh, it does seem, from what I have read, um, and, I, and I've read, read a lot more since I made my submission, it does seem that special emphasis was given to people who don't normally speak up and they were selected by council. Yes. Thank you. Councillor Hanford, do we... Yes, kia ora. I do have a quick question. Thank you, Joanna. Um, you mentioned unity and you mentioned kind of bringing people together to create or to co-create kind of governance or democracy here in Kapiti, which I believe is very important. Um, how do you think we bring in people who aren't currently represented, though, or empowered by the current system? And how do we make sure that our that our governance systems and structures represent those people who who you know might be on the margins, but who actually you know, deserve and need kind of an opportunity to help shape this as well. I'm just, just keen to hear how that kind of comes into this okay. as well for you. Well, thanks for the question. Um, first of all, the research doesn't indicate to me that people do feel disempowered. There wasn't any research done on this. Right, okay. Um, no other questions, Joanna. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Bye-bye. The next um, submitter is Ian Powell. Um, Joanna, no, oh sorry, Ian. Ian, can you unmute yourself? Are you there? Ian, can you hear us? No, you can't. <laughs> well, if he's, if he's muted, then he can't hear me. No, he can hear you. Oh, he can... If you can hear me, uh, can you press the unmute button so that we can hear you? Yep, let's do that, and then we can come back to Ian. Asha, are you there? Mr. Wilson Goldman. Kia ora. Kia ora, man. Off you go. Yep, you're on. Excellent. Well, thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for having me this morning. Um, I've, I'm not going to speak too much to the detail that was in my submission. I'm going to talk about some of the principles behind it, and then obviously happy to take any questions from anybody around the table. I think 
for me, it's, it's really clear, and I, I find it quite easy to understand the problem that council officers have attempted to propose a solution to through this representation review is it's a challenge where some of the community boards aren't necessarily having the same effective connection with their residents in their area as you'd hope and they aren't necessarily able to fulfill the role but I think one of the key differences between where I see things and where I think this proposal has come from is that it sees the solution as disestablishing community boards perhaps investing some more in council officer capacity to better engage with communities. I fail to see that the solution to a democratic problem is ever to reduce democracy. So for me, the solution to a democratic problem, a problem of representation, a problem of community voice, should be to enhance democracy and understand why it's feeling some challenges and, and how we can make it better. And I think Councillor Hansford asked a really important question uh, to the last speaker, which was how do we actually ensure that the voices of those who currently aren't being heard and would like to be heard are able to be heard in the voice of council and in the actions that council takes. And so what I'd like to see is, is actually not a disestablishment of community boards, but a re-emphasis on community boards, uh, an opportunity to really take the lessons from, I think, Paikau Kariki Community Board, which probably most of you around the table and sitting now would view as the most effective community board currently in terms of the way it engages with its community and the way it engages with council. Paikau Kariki Community Board is able to bring in a whole range of community members, not simply through the formal channels, but also through the informal ones. And I think in doing so, it opens up access to council decision-making, to council thinking, and to engaging with external agencies such as Waka Kotahi in a way that some of the other community boards perhaps aren't necessarily able to do as well at this stage. But part of that isn't the nature of, and it's nothing inherent in the Otaki community or the Waikanae community or the Parapara Ubu or Aumati community. It's actually, it's about the nature of the people who run for community board and stand on community board and their connections into the community, but also the nature of their their willingness to engage with or without support necessarily from council officers. And I think actually working with the people who are currently on Pākakari Community Board and people who have been on it over the last few terms, some of whom sit around the council table, to understand where that success has come from and what has driven it and how that success can be transported to the other community boards, how those lessons can be shared with the other community boards to better enable community engagement right across. Because we have a challenging community to engage with. We have obviously a large elderly population, particularly both in retirement villages and residential care homes, but also in the community. But we also have a whole lot and increasing number of people who live a lot of their lives outside of our district. We have a lot of people in the Kapiti Coast district who live a fair chunk of their lives in Wellington. And that's where I'm zooming into you from today. I'm sitting in my office in Wellington. How we can engage with those people is a challenge that I don't think council has cracked yet. And it means operating on different timeframes. It means operating at different times of the day and on weekends because that's when those people, people like me, are actually in the Kapiti Coast. But it also means ultra-local connections. And I think, you know, Mr. Mayor, you ran at the last election on a platform of empowering community boards and that was something I, I really supported. I think it's a really idea worth actually having a serious go at and it's not something that I've seen this term from the council. I think we run a risk really of saying we've tried nothing and it hasn't worked Therefore, let's get rid of community boards. Well, I personally would like to see us try something. I'd like to see us really put, spend at least a, a full term putting some serious effort into supporting community boards, into sharing those best practice lessons from Paikakariki, but also from other community boards that are successful around the country, and putting some real resource and effort into helping community boards engage and connect with communities, because five people on a community board are going to be able to do it much more effectively than one councillor or two councillors ever could. And so that really comes to the, the core principle of a, my submission to you all and something I hope you consider is that the solution to a democratic deficit isn't less democracy, it's more. It's resourcing it better, it's trying to learn from best practice and it's really enabling communities to have their say. And as part of that, I really strongly endorse not simply retaining the community boards as they are today, but actually adding another one. And I speak as a Romati resident, as someone who's town Romati Beach and Romati South have no representation amongst the council table at the moment. Um, 
obviously we have Councillor Hanford as our ward councillor who is great and wonderful, but we don't have anyone who lives in the Romati who spends their time here and who really understands the needs of Romati as a resident of Romati. And I think the way to get around that, because it's very difficult in terms of increasing representation on the council table, but the way to get around that is to create a Romati community board, is to really empower the residents of Romati to own their own future within the Kapiti Coast District on an equal footing with places like Ōtaki and Waikanae who don't have many more people and Pakakariki who actually have less. So I really strongly urge you all to um, take a good look at the proposal that's on the table to say actually it doesn't solve the problems we're trying to meet and in fact it goes in the wrong direction to attempt to solve those challenges and instead to really invest in our community boards over the coming training and over the rest of this term as well and to, to enable all people in Kapiti Coast to actually have their say, to have their voice heard around the table and to engage with the future of our district. Thank you, Thank you. Sure. I've got uh, Councillor Holbrook and Councillor McCann with questions. Kia ora, Asha. Thank you so much for that um, presentation. So having been on the Paikakariki Community Board, um, one of the things that made that kind of, kind of harder and easier was that it's a community of 1,600 people, by far the smallest community board in Kapiti, and in fact the second smallest in the country. My question is, if you're wanting that real grassroots um, representation, might there not be an opportunity for our smaller communities, for instance, Reikarangi, Pikapika, to be represented if you actually, in fact, moved away from the community board model into smaller community-led, not staff-led, community-led um, grassroots groups with a guaranteed, some kind of guarantee of communication into council. It's just one of the kind of things that we, we've been kind of throwing about. Yeah, I think that's a really interesting idea. Um, I think particularly for those communities who talked about, communities like Pekka Pekka, it's, it's, it's hard to speak to specifics because it's not an ex a living experience I've had, I guess, it. and so I don't have a sense for people who live in those areas um, what their entry into council decision making is like currently or, or what they might prefer. But I think one of the, the key points I make, and I, and I agree with what you said about Pakakariki, obviously it has the benefit of size. It makes it much easier to have those grassroots connections. But I think there's also a real benefit to having it led by people who have been democratically elected. I think that informal residents associations, uh, community groups, etc., are incredibly important and have a lot to offer, but they aren't a substitute for democratically elected people. They don't have the same democratic mandate, they don't have the same community mandate. And I think it's, it's fair to say my experience with resident associations, which is largely when I used to live in Wellington City, but they tend to become controlled quite quickly by a conservative clique and they often uh, they often end up, <laughs> I hate to say it, but more as dynasties than as democratic organisations. It's not to say it's, it's inherent to the system, but I think it is one, it is something that we see quite a lot around the country in, in resident associations and I think having that democratic control through democratic elections like a community board is a is a, a way to, to guard against that risk. So I think that, that would be my hesitancy around what you're suggesting but I think there's, there is certainly a need to ensure that our smaller communities also have a way and, and a voice within our wider uh, governance ecosystem. Councillor McCann. Ah, I've learned to press the red button. Kia ora, thank <laughs> you very go. much, Asha. Hey, um, one of the things that interests me is is your willingness to say that there are some issues. I mean, next door in the room next to us, there's a literally a wheelbarrow of documents that should have been used for consultation by the community boards. So you've mentioned Paikokariki as being uh, well-functioning. How do we work with community boards or make changes when they don't ah, recognise any of the... As well. Right. Deficiencies okay. they have. Sorry, they seem to have a technical right. Okay, thank you. Okay. Sorry, I lost the last part of your conversation there. Just it's cause it's probably talking. for the best, but um, <laughs> you, you've recognised some of the deficiencies that are out there and you've been clear that there are some. How do we work with community boards who don't recognise any of the deficiencies that there might be? How do we improve them? When... Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I, I see what you're talking about. Um, 
it is a challenge, and I think that's where, you know, having really clear purpose of what a community board's role is, and I don't think that's necessarily always been communicated very clearly, and empowering them slightly more within the wider governance ecosystem will help to improve the calibre of candidates that are running for community board. At the moment, there's there's a range of reasons why people run for community board, and many and most of those probably are honourable and, and purposeful reasons. But without the clarity on the purpose of a community board and the role of a community board member, I think it's quite hard to attract the right people. There's obviously always going to be challenges in terms of time commitments, in terms of financial remuneration, all sorts of other reasons. But I think having that really clear outline of purpose and and meaning is going to help raise the caliber of candidates, which in turn will help raise the performance. Having said that, you know, we're still dealing with the world as it is, not the world as we wish it could be. So um, I think it's, it's about a, a community board and council lead approach, and it, particularly through the ward councillors' influence on community boards, I think, it, using that, to work with communities on a genuine co-design. So actually the needs of the Paikakariki community from their community board are probably quite different from the needs of Waikanae from their community board. You know, there'll be a whole lot that one can learn from the other, but actually there'll be some things that are very specific to Waikanae, and the only way that those will be discovered is through a genuine co-design process with that community. And what that means is co-design isn't quick and it isn't necessarily easy, but it's the only way that you can get genuine results. Kind of speaks to what the previous person was talking about in terms of quality versus quantitative research but co-design takes it that next step which is not just working with people to understand their needs and wants but actually working with people to plan the solutions to those and so I would wholeheartedly advocate and this can form part of the the process towards you know some of the the town centres work that KCDC is doing and some of the other work that is really community driven is what is the role of, of the community board in that what's the role of the community board in monitoring council performance against agreed uh, plans for town centre rejuvenation? What is the role of the community board in terms of supporting engagement from their community members with various council bits of consultation that are on things that are to do with that community? So I think it, it's, I, I'd support KCDC as part of that investment that I talked about, actually committing to a co-design process with each of the communities in our district to define and design what a new reformed revitalized community board system could thanks very like. thanks very much asha for that really informative answer um can uh come for you've got a question Asher, I've got two, and just we're in a bit of time pressure, so um, I'll keep it short. Keep it quick. And keep it short um, as well. Um, firstly, excellent um, submission, lots of food for thought in there, so thank you. Um, you've commented quite a lot about the community boards. I agree with you around Paikakariki being a, a model example of delivery within the, at a grassroots re- level. Um, despite what has been said, community boards do get supported um, and, and resourced. Why would anything be different if Paikakariki has managed to achieve what they've achieved with the current resources and support there and others haven't? That's my first question, then I've got a second one. Cool, uh, just quickly on that then, uh, I think it's largely with what Councillor Holbrook mentioned, so it's the size of Paikakariki. It's easy to spread that resource out to engagement with a smaller community. I think it's also part of the nature of the community of Paikakariki that had some quite high calibre candidates put themselves towards the community board over the last few terms and, and that's been a real advantage for them. I think it's enabled them to do some really good work. Um, it's people who already have really deep ties and quite ranging, t- wide ranging ties into the community and it's a community that is probably generally more politically engaged anyway. So it's, it's a slightly easier job. Not to say it's easy, but a slightly easier job than some of our other communities. Second question is that you have spoken this entire time around the support for community boards. You, however, your submission does talk about a couple of different options around councillors, and in particular, want to draw attention to the one around uh, ward councillors for Raumati and also um, two ward councillors for Otaki and Waikanae, I think, from memory, were in your submission. So, just briefly, your thoughts around, or I guess the rationale around increasing representation there. Yeah, so it, it, partially it's to um, to separate to allow the separation of Paikakariki. So if you give Paikakariki its own councillor, then you obviously need to do something with the other wards in order to um, 
not have the balance to out of whack in terms of population. But also it's because unlike, say, for example, Wellington City Council, the, the, the pay for you all around the council table is not such that it means you can do this as a full-time job. Some of you do, and, and full credit to you, but for the most of you, you have other roles outside of this. And I think, therefore, it, it, it's always going to be difficult for you individually, for those of you in one council awards, to be able to engage as widely as you'd like with your full communities. And so I think enabling those uh, mid-sized districts, so Raumati, Waikanae and Otaki, to have two councillors would just help to share that load and, and to enable councillors themselves to be able to engage more widely across their community. Right. Thank you, Asha, and um, thank you for the time you've spent with the submission. Thank you all. Um, Thank you. Can we go back to Ian Powell? Uh, kia ora, hello. Can you hear uh, me now? Yes, we can hear you clearly. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, apologies for that. That was my own uh, lack that's of technical all, that's expertise right. and no other explanation. Shall I start now? Yes, there you go. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll keep this brief, and it's from the level of a degree of generality. Uh, uh, just a little bit of background. I've, I live in Otahanga. I've been here for nearly eight years. But prior to that, I had 30 years in uh, Paikakariki. So that sort of gets me close to being qualified as a local. I, um, I have worked um, up until the end of 2019 in the, in, in the health system, uh, representing medical specialists. Uh, and some, a lot of that experience um, um, leads me to the views that I want to express in respective community boards. Uh, presently, I'm um, a highly underpaid health system commentator and blogger. Um, my focus is really on community boards. And um, first of all, I want to be clear that I, I don't believe in conspiracy theories except for fun. So I love X-Files. Uh, but purely for fun and not for guiding in terms of approaches to issues. So I think the question that's being raised about the future of community boards is a legitimate one to raise. But in terms of levering off uh, experience in the health system, what I would say is that <clears throat> the basic principle there is that the closer to decision making, the closer decision making and engagement to the clinical front line, the better the quality of the outcome. And I think that principle applies also in, in, the, in the question of local government. Uh, I, would like, I would support the continuation of community boards um, from that perspective. I think the focus needs to be on, rather than disestablishing, to, fo to improve engagement with communities, um, enhancing voice opportunities, and um, ensuring that community boards have the right level of status and can be enabled, better enabled to, to do this. Uh, there's, a, there's a principle I'd like to raise, and I, I'm, I'm, I struggle to pronounce words that have more than uh, one, uh, sorry, more, you could say one, but more than about three or four syllables in them. But the word, if I can get it right, is uh, subsidi subsidi subsidiarity which is kind of like a combination of uh, subsidiary and solidarity. Uh, but it's a principle that sits behind, as I understand it, local and national government uh, universally, uh, very much throughout the world. And the principle, as I understand it, is that what can't be done by local government should be done by central government rather than the other way around. Um, so, um, and if, if just wanted to, just like to devolve that further, uh, I think that you, you, um, uh, you need to start summing up. Yep. What can't be done by uh, a community board um, should be done by the district council. So it's a question of what looking having a, having a structure that enables that to actually happen. I, I'm happy to uh, expand on that in the context of the direction of the health system, which will become very relevant to the council, but I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Right. Any questions? Your lucky day. Doesn't seem to be any questions. So thank you, Ian, for your time that you've taken submitting to us. Thank you. Next. Peter Katz has withdrawn. Um, 
The next is um, who's the next one? Max Lux. Mr. Lux, are you there? You there, Guru? Oh, yep. We can hear you now. Oh, good morning, Guru. Oh, there you go. Good morning, Ch Chairman Guru, councillors, community board members and council staff. Thank you for this opportunity to speak today. And I'm going to be talking about the retention of the community boards because I strongly support them. And uh, as I've been the chairman of the Friends of the Otaki River for 17 years, I chaired the Kapiti Coast District Council CWB Advisory Group for 12 years. I chair the Alumni Trust at Otaki College and currently chair the CLG of the PP2O coming through to Otaki. And uh, I also was very involved with the last uh, um, proposed district plan that was done by Kapiti Coast District Council. And so I obviously had very strong, had and still have very strong links with some or many of the KCDC working with many departments, staff and councillors and I have, a, have had a very good rapport with the last four mayors of the Kapiti Coast District Council and as I was getting involved with these projects I became very involved with the community board and I found the community board, our local community board at Otaki such a wonderful facility to get, to go to for support learn about the democratic processes and also to apply for funding and to have local council representation through the community board for the successful community groups that I have been leading over the last 20 years. <clears throat> Sorry about this, Guru. I seem to have uh, lost my way here. It is a great opportunity for so many young and old people to turn up at a local um, community board meeting and have their say, to, which is then can carried on through to the council and express their concerns. They have some opportunities for funding. Young students uh, uh, have many worthwhile projects they want to do and especially sporting and events and also the community projects as well as youth getting to understand the tapestry of our democratic system. And most importantly, this community board provides a conduit for our community to thank council and councillors so often for a job well done. The community board, board provide a great training process for succession of good councillors coming forward through to our council table. The community gives the, the council, the whole council structure. And I must say, I do have trouble understanding why so many members are leaving our staff presently after I personally have had such a wonderful working relationship with so many for so many years. And I would just like to say today, and, and summing up, Guru, I really would like to see the retention of the community boards. I know they do have their little failings at times, but in the main, they are a wonderful asset to a community such as Oteki and Waikanae, Paikokariki, and also Paraparam. And I would like to see them retained for the future. Thank you, Mr. Lux. Um, any questions? Councillor Holborough. Kia ora, Max. Thank you for all the work you do in the community. It just made me think that you're exactly the kind of person with all those community connections that is that is so valuable on community boards. Have you ever considered being on the community board yourself? And how could we encourage people with those community connections to put their hand up? Yes, well, well I hear what you say, and it's certainly something I have... Um, considered many times uh, my uh, standing for a community board or even council and uh, I honestly believe that I consider that I've been able to do more from outside rather than sitting around the table and with my involvement in bringing in funding for projects I've brought in under my chairmanship uh, somewhere in the vicinity of three quarters of a million dollars worth of projects completed for the uh, our community. 
So if you're able to do more from outside the community board, how does that align with your position that you want to retain community boards? Because I see the asset of them and I've attended many community board meetings and we've had some very, very good community board members and they have worked their way through to council and I just consider I would be sort of wasted putting my efforts into uh, working within the council system when I perhaps are still very committed to my own business on our family farm which has been in the district for 85 years and I still manage to work within the community and provide a lot of uh, good good work and I consider I would be wasted sitting around the table. Thanks Max. Councillor Good. Kia ora, Max. Um, good to hear from you today. Uh, two questions very quickly. Uh, we've had submissions, we've had a group submission from the Wartaki Community Board, which, if I just to be short and frank, uh, I, I think alludes to this, more the status quo of community boards at least. And then um, separate submissions from individuals within that board suggesting uh, the removal of ward councillors, not just the Wartaki one, but ward councillors in general and uh, community boards at the council table instead. So I just, I'm interested in your thoughts around that proposal. Um, and then I have a second question to you around rural aspects. Right. <clears throat> Look, I'm quite happy with the, with the council uh, situation as it is. And I think retention of a ward councillor is important. And um, we certainly, we're certainly well covered in our area at the moment when you look at the number of councillors and our mayor all living around Otaki. We have good access to so many, but uh, the ward councillor certainly is an important part and he also, or they sit on the community board, which is an important part of the whole process. Thank you, Max. Sorry, as a follow-on question from that, there has been other submissions suggesting two ward councillors for the smaller communities like Otaki and Waikanae. Is that something that you'd support? Yes, I would support that, definitely. Okay. And lastly, there, through the submissions, which I appreciate you haven't had the opportunity to read, um, there is suggestions around rural representation. So I'm interested in your thoughts around, you know, whether there's a rural community board, for example. Well, the last community councillor we really had was uh, Barry Mansell, who was the community uh, on the community board and on council for 18 years. And we were very mindful of the fact that uh, he was our last rural representative on council. And it's something that we're mindful of. And it's up to the rural community to get cracking and find somebody that would stand and represent the rural community. But James, I consider that uh, we're, we're fairly well um, uh, sort of uh, handled out here. I have no problem with uh, coming to you and uh, we get good support. And um, when I thank you for the roading issues, even last night, Rahu Road was blocked and at 10 o'clock, our staff went out and cleared the tree off the road. Um, my car suffered two thousand dollars worth of damage at the Otaki refuse tip yesterday, and we also pulled Warren McRae's uh, vehicle out of the drain this morning. So we certainly do help uh, out in the rural area here for council. Thanks, Max. That's really helpful. Right. Um, thank. Thank you, Max. Um, no other questions. Thank you for the time. Thank you, Guru. Bye for now. Bye. Um, Shelley Warwick. You there, Shelley? Yep, I'm here. Yep. Hi, everyone. Yep, well, where you go? Okay. Um, I'm sure you've read a, a fair few hundred submissions, but I've just got a few questions from mine. Um, I did ask how much the embassy report and staff time that went into make here to putting together this representation review cost and I haven't had any response to that yet and I'm just wondering why council is reluctant to release this information and my concern is about the voting on this representation review which is to effectively remove community boards we have not seen our district wide councillors at our community board meetings this triennium and so I'm wondering how they can vote or comment on the efficacy of the four boards within Kapiti without any first-hand experience of how the boards work. There are many examples of how community boards have produced results within the community that benefit the district and everyone in it. If our district-wide councillors do not have the time to attend the community board meet meetings now across the district that they were elected to represent, 
How are they going to fit in the community committees that are proposed in the review? If the councillor's job and hours are to increase as they engage more with the community, are they expecting increased remuneration for this? And if so, how much? What is the expected cost of setting up these community committees? You're gonna need minute takers, secretaries, call hire, follow up. This is, is this not just replicating the community boards, but instead of having elected people, it will be with selected people. And how does that increase democracy? I'm also very concerned about the quality of the MPC report. It is of poor quality, lacking statistics with meaning, and in places it seems laughable, like on page eight, when it talks about 18 people recruited into semi-structured interviews, the report states that sometimes other family members present were part of the conversation, and in brackets I quote, like the peppy on its mum's lap. And I'm just wondering what kind of input into local politics a baby can provide. How has this report upheld the commitment to the Treaty of Waitangi? How many people from Otaki were interviewed or recruited? How many iwi? How many women? How many rural representatives? And the consultation document is confusing. In the document itself, it is not until the last page that the two key themes of war boundary change and removal of community boards is discussed. This is not typical of a consultation document by KCDC, not to highlight the key themes in the first few pages as you would expect in say a long-term plan document. The do document also talks about three large wards, but I thought wards were based on population, not land mass. And so in effect, we have two mini wards and one super ward. Otaki and Paikakariki stand to lose out with a three to one vote capability around the table and a much larger pool of candidates for ward council positions. Before becoming a member of the community board, I sought support for very important road safety campaigns in Otaki through the community board because I could not get any help from council or councillors. Now, as a community board member, I get approached by community members who are equally frustrated by a lack of response by council. Community board members are community people that community members feel they can approach on a local level with local issues, and often when they have tried to engage in democracy through council to no avail. I think district-wide councillors, with a lack of experience of community board functioning in this triennium, and due to a lack of attendance in this training, should find voting on this recommendation very hard on their conscience. And so should vote it down, as should our own ward councillors. That's it. Thank you very much. Questions, we've got uh, Councillor Elliott and then Councillor Coots. Um, thank you very much for uh, your comments and your submission, Shelley. I just did want to ask you if you remember at all that, uh, the times that I have attended your community board meetings in Otaki. You can remind me of that, Jackie. It's not, we don't get a lot of district wide councillors very often. So. Um, Councillor Coots. Kia ora Shelley, thanks for your submission. You've posed a lot of questions there, but unfortunately for the nature of hearings, there's no opportunity for us as a council to respond to questions. It's for us to ask you questions. Um, so I, I, a couple I will take offline just to inform you. Um, however, I have a few questions out of your submission. I don't have time for all of them. I'm just gonna pick one. In your recommendations, you've got more training and support for community boards. There's already training and support provided to community boards. It would be helpful if you could elaborate on what you see as lacking and what could be provided. Um, well, both trainiums that I've been on, we get a bit of training to start with and then we're just left. So I think that training needs to be ongoing through the trainium and there needs to be support from council staff and the actual councillors who are elected to represent the whole district. Um, there just seems to be a lack of any engagement at all, really. 
So the comment just training is quite broad. Is there specific training that you're not getting? The, the point that I'm trying to get is, is helping the council understand what community boards feel is lacking in, ter you know, in terms of that level of training, as opposed to a broad brush comment around just training in general. Um, well, the avenues to go down to get things done. Often you, as a community board, can ask for things and it just seems to go nowhere. So it would be good to have more engagement from councillors in ways of um, getting action from requests. Um, training, I'm not really sure, to be honest. I Thanks, Shelley. Right. Um, does there seem to be any more questions? Thank you for the time you've taken to submit. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Now the next summit is Prue Hyman. Yes. Am I ready to go? Yes, you are. Right. Um, I'm a resident of Paikakariki for the last 50 years, and I'm focusing on, as the previous speaker did, on the proposed abolition of community boards. I totally oppose this. I think the Paikakariki Community Board has done a very good job over the years at representing the village, consulting on important issues and fulfilling its statutory roles. I've no experience of the other community boards, and I don't know whether they haven't, whether or not they've done as well, but to abolish Paikakariki Community Board at least would be a major mistake in my view. The research document on which the review is partly based is, as the last speaker said, a pretty feeble piece of work. As a social scientist, I'm totally unimpressed by it. It's uh, based on too low an engagement uh, with local people. It states all sides on each issue, often totally contradictory, which is quite reasonable in the sense that um, we get those contradictory views in the community, but it's not convincing in its conclusions um, based on such a small um, sample. Um, I recognise that Paikakariki is small and can't expect to determine all council policy, but as you will all know, it is a highly engaged community, um, very on the ball in all sorts of ways. I call it, amongst other things, the arts capital of the universe and uh, it deserves to have its concerns taken seriously and often doesn't, like the seawall has been dragging on forever and uh, the agreed um, uh, solution is now being gone back on for expense. This is the problem that money, all the, it, all the expense goes up every flipping time and then you can't get what has been agreed after a great deal of work by all sorts of people in Pika Creek, mostly on a voluntary basis. The review talks of wanting to get more people involved in local government, and that's highly commendable in principle, um, and yet it proposes to abolish the community boards, which in my view help greatly with this. Of course, some people don't want to be involved, and that's their right. Um, they're too busy with other things. I was for a period, but now I'm retired. I have, have an interest in local matters, I always did, but now I have more time to put into them, and I care about them. And anyone who does want to be involved uh, easily can be in the current system. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. There's, uh, there's no real barriers. They t there's talk about barriers to involvement. I don't know what those barriers are. There's very little spelt out about them. And uh, certainly our community board tries to make sure that anybody who wants to be involved can be. One councillor for Paikakariki Raumati cannot possibly be as, co as consultative as when um, supplemented by four Paikakariki community board members. They, wouldn't, they simply wouldn't have the time and resources and talk about putting more resources into councillors rather than putting more into community boards seems to me to be a mistake. Um, the cost, according to one paper, is only a quarter of a million of community boards, which is comparative peanuts. If that was removed and put into councillors, I think that would be a mistake. On the contrary, uh, increasing the delegations and support for community boards would be far better. And there is some insulting stuff in the report on the, from the June 19th. Um, KCDC meeting talking about unhelpful layers of representative uh, representation and confusing layers. There's no spelling out as to how community boards are unhelpful or confusing. On the contrary, we all understand what they're doing very well and um, are very glad that they can sit in on KCDC meetings 
and uh, try and make um, the local views well known. Um, so uh, I, I really think you need to think again. There were two out of four of the scenarios that were put forward that had community boards and two that didn't. It seems to me the argument that is put forward for not having the community boards is very, very thin. And uh, um, I think, I just believe that uh, you, sh you should think again and take one of the other scenarios and uh, keep community boards. Thank you. Right. Hello? I can't hear anything. Oh, kia ora. <laughs> kia ora, Pru. I was just waiting for the microphone to come to me. Councillor Sophie Hanford here. Hey, my question is just around, obviously you said that the Pakekariki Community Board works really well and also works really hard, and I completely agree with you. They do an incredible job. Um, and I just wanted to know, though, if you think there are any other ways that we could ride across the district, better connect and educate people from all, like our whole community, including people who um, currently don't engage as much as they potentially could with community boards, such as our young people, um, such as maybe our mana whenua. How do you think we we better then identify the purpose of purposes of community boards and then connect our diverse community across people who yeah who maybe don't who maybe aren't as knowledgeable as you about the, the role of community boards and the work that they're doing right now? How do we bring those people into this conversation? Well. I'm not a, a great social media uh, expert, um, but obviously social media seems to be the way in which young people react these days. I mean, I think Paikakari Community Board does a pretty good job of circulating stuff. I think the Paikakari.nz website is very good, and um, I find that I get all the information very easily, but um, that's, uh, that's, that's me. Um, obviously, engagement with local iwi is important, and I thought that was happening to a reasonable extent, as is, um, but obviously it could be improved. And involving young people, um, well, you need to have meetings and, um, and I, I guess, social media stuff to... Um, to get them more involved, I, I can't. I think you're probably better, better equipped to know that than I am. Yeah, thanks, <laughs> you're a young just, person. Just came to get your thoughts. So that's great. Thank you. Um, Guru, Mayor Guru here. <clears throat> you made the claim that uh, Pakakiriki is the most creative community in the universe. While I agree, <laughs> while I agree with that, as a social scientist, can you tell me what's your methodology that you've used to come to that conclusion? Oh, that was meant to be a joke, but I certainly think it is very creative. The um, the musical life, for example, with the concerts that Mary um, Gal does, and the gigs at the town hall, uh, the gigs at our Pikakariki, um, uh St Peter's, and uh, our, our writers, our artists. I think we have an amazing um, array of uh, enough. Enough. Of I'm convinced. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, there are no other questions, so thank you very much for the time you've given to this. Okay, thank you. Okay, bye. Um, the next is Neville Watkins. Neville, you there? Mr. Watkins. You there? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, um, yes, we can hear you. Go ahead now. Okay, I'm afraid I've got a few technical issues here, but I can't actually see myself. <laughs> Never oh, mind. But you know who you are, um, that's fine. Okay. Right, well, um, no doubt you've read my feedback. Um... Oh, we've lost you. Neville. Oh. Have you mute? Can you unmute yourself? Hang on. I think what's the, the problem here is that I have got a live stream going and it's causing a lot of problems. I'm going to shut down the live stream just a minute. Okay. Um, it might be better if we don't have that. Let's right, just see if it works you. better now. Yeah, we can hear you. Dead. Uh, uh, can you still hear me? 
hear you, hear you very clearly. Okay, look, we're, we're, I don't have a long time delay anymore. Last time it was giving me the, the feedback, what I was saying about five seconds later, which was a bit confusing. Okay, you've read my um, feedback. I presume it was short and sweet. It wouldn't have taken you long. Uh, on the last question on the back page there, I said basically about your uh, proposal, frankly, it's a disgusting, ill-conceived proposal that council should be ashamed of. Now, I basically stand by that statement still. I have since done a little bit of more research, I have to admit, um, but I have basically in the past had no uh, local body or, or local government experience of any sort. So you could say that I'm sort of shooting from the hip a wee bit, but um, mm -hmm. let's just focus on why I say that your proposal, first of all, is disgusting. Uh, first of all, it, it just basically shrieks low quality the way it, it reads um, and when you sort of start analysing what you've concluded and how you've reached the conclusions it really just makes me ill because it is not scientifically done and it's really just invalid the whole thing basically you should go back and start again um, However, I suspect that's not going to happen. I suspect that, um, you know, the, the decision you've made is pretty much a fait accompli and um, time will tell if you take any notice of what any of us say. Um, it's, it is fair to say, of course, that the council isn't my favourite organisation at the moment. Um, my rates on my modest property have gone up 21% this year. That didn't um, endear me to the council by, in, in any way. 21% uh, is a pretty eye-watering amount for one year's increase. It's an even bigger eye-watering amount when you put it into dollars that I have to find every year on a fixed income. However, let's get back to this proposal. Uh, you say that the only way you can achieve what you want to achieve, which is you know, to um, so-called maintain communities of interest and so on, uh, is, is to do this what, you, what you're calling a new ward structure. Well, I'm sorry, but it simply doesn't wash. The new ward structure does nothing of the kind. It, it simply reduces democracy. It doesn't increase it. Uh, doing away with community boards is very short-sighted. Uh, they, they have a very modest budget, I would have thought, in the scheme of things, a quarter of a million dollars a year. Hey, you know, that's just a drop in the bucket. And I suspect that you know, the amount of community involvement that they provide is way, way underestimated. Now, on the um, question of the review itself and, and the report that was produced, the word I'd have to use is shonky. It really is. The, the research that you've done, based on a sample size of 157 people uh, out of a population of 56 odd thousand, I mean, it's just simply mathematical nonsense. Um, you must be extremely confident that you have um, somehow, by some miracle, achieved a statistically um, significant result by choosing 157 people across a population of that size. It simply does not make any sense. Reinforces my view that I suspect this whole thing is a fait accompli. Um, you know, um, the, the obvious thing that I thought should should have at least been done, if, if you are hell-bent on doing away with community boards, then why not look at the ward structure and even it all up? Obviously, if you want to have three wards, you could have actually had two councillors on each of three wards, um, or you could actually go the other way and... and you know, go back to more of the communities of interest, have more than the current number of wards, one councillor per, per ward. Um, I've done a bit of research on around the country. Many, many councils around the country, and especially in the bigger urban areas, have gone that way. Tauranga for one, uh, Christchurch for another. Christchurch has 16 wards, basically based on on um, on suburbs, each uh, ward has one councillor. Mr. Watkins, they don't have Mr. Watkins, any district-wide councillors. Mr. Watkins, Are you there? yes, Mr. Watkins, can you please sum up your presentation? Certainly. 
so yeah in 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 short i am saying you've got to go back to the drawing board on this it's it's absolute nonsense um i i would definitely have been very very embarrassed if this report was put out in my name as having been um, properly researched and properly put together. I think it really does do the council no um, justice whatsoever right. uh, and you've got to go back to the drawing board. Thank you very Thank much. You. Uh, just stay there for some questions. Councillor Pravnov. through you Mr Mayor, thank you Neville for your um, submission and your presentation and I hear what you're saying in terms of what you've said to us today but I'm, I'm just interested in um, you know you saying earlier on that normally you're not involved in, in council matters, elected matters so I'm just interested to know what has spurred you on to become involved in this process and by all accounts you've become, you know you've actually um, read a lot in terms of um, um, of making your submission, so I'm really interested to, to what spurred you on to become involved in this process. Well, as I said, I guess you know, frankly, the um, putting up of my rates by 21% did not endear me to the council. As I said, that basically made me take notice of what the council is doing. Um, if they think that um, putting up rates by that amount in one year is acceptable, then you know they might be buying a little bit of trouble around the community. That is basically what what made me sit up and take notice about you know what the council is doing and you know frankly when I read this this proposal it, it sort of said to me well they're not really doing a very good job at all. Thank you very much. Right. Um, no other questions. Councillor Cook. Kia ora Neville. Um, Ōtiki Ward Councillor James Coots here. Um, appreciate your submission and you taking the time to talk to us today. Um, there's a couple of things that you've said in there and in your submission it talks about the retention of community boards and you've um, quite rightly and understandably raised the issue of your 21% rate increase. How do you f see that that would be any different through the retention of community boards? And then I have a second question. Well, just on the first one, I think that it's a bit irrelevant really um, you know that rate increase is, is just the reason that I gave for you know highlighting my um, you know sort of uh, you know getting the council into my sites but no that's not, uh, can you give, give me the second question because I don't think that first question is particularly relevant to anything yeah sure the, um, the second one is I think you made a comment there correct me if I'm wrong that if we had to do away with community boards and I'm not saying we will I, I certainly from a personal perspective of open-minded um, you made the comment around uh, having uh, small awards or more councillors per ward so is that something that you would support council considering um, in terms of looking at representation and increased ward councillors or councillors per smaller community uh, I, I would support any proposal which genuinely increases democratic participation uh, you know it seems to me that at the moment the community board system is probably the best way that we've got of doing that of bringing the the council table down to the local level uh, but there are I'm sure other ways that it could be done and yes one of them could be to to have um, you know more ward based councillors maybe do away with the district-wide councillors and have them all ward-based, like a lot of local authorities actually do. Um, you know, there's all sorts of, of combinations and permutations here, but this, this proposal of, of going three so-called big wards uh, with, with three ward councillors in the central one and one each for the, the, the two, the, the, the north and the south one, it just makes no sense whatsoever. I mean, at the very least, you would have thought that you would have had three wards if you wanted to go that way without any community boards, and each of those three wards would have two councillors. Um, and if you want to still have ten councillors, then that leaves four, you know, to be um, to be district wide. But you know, that's just one of many combinations and permutations. 
Thank, you know, thanks very lots, much, lots Neville. Lots of other options. Right. Appreciate Thank, it, Southall. Thank you very much, Neville, for the time you've taken. Thank you. Right. Um, the next <laughs> submitter is from the Templeton Group, Chris Simpson. Chris, oh, you there? Hello, everybody. Yeah. Hello, yeah, everybody. For the floor. Thank, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, uh, I assume everybody's read our sort of submission. Uh, I won't talk to it at length. <laughs> Other than other than to say that we definitely support uh, the review, definitely compliments to the staff who put a lot of work and effort into the actual report itself, which put out some very good questions, which do require uh, answers to. Uh, with regards, to our overall uh, viewers definitely support that localism approach, and again, uh, looking at the growth that's going to be happening in Carpathia over the next 20, 30 years. It's a matter of how do you actually accommodate the growth from a democracy perspective in the sense of uh, allowing councillors, uh, wards, uh, uh, community boards, etc., to have more involvement rather than less. Whereas as you have a growing community, you're going to have that natural pushback anyway. And then if you look at it from a local government New Zealand perspective and the work that they're doing on localism, there's a, there's a whole lot of answers in, uh, into the questions that are out there around what that will look like, what that future will look like with regards to growth. So I won't take up too much of your time because I know you've got a lot to go through. So if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Right. Um, Councillor Coates, have you, have you, know, you just... Councillor Compton. Um, thank you. Through the chair, um, Chris, I was... You've obviously had a lot of experience dealing with communities across the country in terms of the development work you've been doing, and I imagine you quite often do that at the sort of, I guess, the granular level, so not at the main council table. So I was wondering if you could share some of your perspectives about the benefits um, of taking that sort of approach where you're dealing directly with an impacted community rather than trying to work across a whole district. Yeah, thank, thank you, uh, Councillor Compton. Uh, what happens when you're developing at scale is that unlike a normal sort of smaller developer who may be doing sort of a hundred or you know, you know or less than that, when, when you do develop at scale, you have to spend a lot of time in the community. So not just legislative, but actually you need the community working with you and understanding what you're doing uh, because ultimately they're going to be your biggest supporters. So it becomes a real, a real sort of important aspect. Uh, for quality development to be done. Regarding community boards and, and also residents associations, we do a lot with community boards all around New Zealand, uh, whether it's uh, Pegasus, uh, the community board level, uh, the councillors, but more importantly also at the residents association level. Uh, and then do n numerous things around Auckland as well with, with community boards, which in, which in effect in many ways are uh, becoming your local borough councils and they then feed into the actual council perspective at, at the council level. And what we find is that working with that community, working with the community boards, working with the local elected representatives makes it a lot easier for the staff and for the officials because you're actually working together for your go to uh, working, uh, going forward with the staff or with the, uh, the council organisation itself. So. It's, it's one of those classic win-win situations. But again, it's, it's when you do it in a quality way at scale, rather than just doing one of the development here or small development there. So for us, it's incredibly important. Uh, so thanks for the, uh, the question. Not a problem. Just, uh, just noting that it's, while we're talking about representation arrangements, you've got a map of the original representation arrangements for local government in the background there, the uh, provincial <laughs> governments of New Zealand. But actually, yeah, uh, it's just a, it's one of those old 1950s maps from uh, school when I was going to school in the 50s. And uh, I just always wanted one, so I grabbed one. Uh, obviously, I didn't steal it from school and just I got it framed and put up on the on the wall. So, yeah, is Thank this, you. Actually, Good observation there, Councillor Compton. <laughs> Councillor Holborough. Hi, no, just a technical glitch there. 
So yeah, thank, you, thank you very much for your submission. So first of all, there are no community boards in Auckland. They're local boards with very different delegations to community boards, and I'm sure you're aware of that. Yes. So you mentioned that you work with community boards as well as residents' associations. You kind of rolled yeah, those two cool. things in together. What are the advantages of community boards over re residents' associations? That's one of the things that's discussed a lot in our submissions. You know, great, great, great question. At the end of the day, the community board has got more of sort of a regulatory approach and it can uh, feed directly through to a council and that's incredibly important when we're actually looking at uh, making changes legislatively at a local government level. So for example, there's one community board that we're working with quite intensely around the, uh, the LTP and they're trying to understand what they need to feed through to the council lawyers themselves. Uh, so that's incredibly important. And then the residents association then supports the community uh, community board, and the, the community board and the the residents association are definitely working together on on certain aspects around what's really relevant at, at a very much a micro level that sometimes a councillor won't get down to, uh, and and so the community board aspects are just important for that regulatory approach working with council itself. Sorry, could you clarify what you mean by the community board having a regulatory approach? A well, regulatory approach in the sense of being uh, paid for and funded by council, okay, and having the ability to have those conversations and at the council level uh, to say, hey, this is what we're doing, this is what, what needs to happen. And then the, then the residents association being able to feel like they can reach out and talk directly with their community board representatives. So that's that's sort of the feeling that is put forward in one of the areas that we're currently working at. And again, you look at it from a, uh, a localism perspective about how you have more democracy and how you have more people being able to feel like they can get involved and be part of it. The other aspect around community boards uh, is how you know people that are incredibly busy who may not want to stand for council uh, but want to work within a community board can actually achieve to do that because it's not seen as a full-time job as such. Great, thanks very much, Chris. Right, Chris. Um, thanks, no so. other questions. Thank you for the time you've taken to engage with us, and hope the weather's good in Hamilton. Yeah, yeah. No, we're we're in, we're in a stricter lockdown in Auckland, so we can't <laughs> have anybody even come around to visit. So it's a bit tougher. Here. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Next, Colin Davis. Hi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Colin. Where you go? Hi. Afternoon, Mayor and Councillors. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. I respectfully request you please consider. Please retain the rep current representation of community boards, numbers of wards, and numbers of district-wide councils, at least until the ratepayers decide how much of the growing well plan they want for each township. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you clearly. Okay, thank you. Uh, the community boards represent the diverse grassroots links of each township and village to council. Council is the district council for the whole of Kapiti. Kapiti Coast District comprises towns and villages. It's not a city in suburbs. There is no city of Kapiti with a string of villages mere suburbs. One can see in the council briefing paper 29th of June, page 5, references to in-need suburbs, perhaps a line of thinking. That briefing paper also, in part, sets out councils' valid reasons to retain the status quo. Each village and town should be fairly represented on the district council based on their populations, not just amalgamated, to lose their identities and voices. Therefore, please just adjust and update the community board and district wide, sorry, district board boundaries to represent the current population. Earlier this year, as a resident of Pokinama Road Tihoro, I was consulted as to a boundary adjustment, the community and ward boundary between Otaki and Waikanae. Very few residents were consulted. Despite my request at the time to Andrea Healy of Council for wider consultation to say within a kilometre of the boundary, present or future. 
that boundary issue should not be used as a reason to abolish council community boards. The irony is that the boundary is incorrectly shown on the council consultation document. It's incorrect and on page six. And although I've notified Andrea Healy of that, I don't know if submitters were alluded to that error, which I think is significant. So please retain the existing structure of representation. Please do not set the representation of Parapara Umu to dominate the council. That's how your proposal looks to me with the proposed numbers achieved by bulking the central ward to three ward councils. The result would just be a city and suburb based structure. Thank you. Right. Um, doesn't seem to be any questions for you. Thank you for the time you put in to making your submission. Thank you. Colin. Thank you. Um, the next submitter is Conrad Peterson. Conrad, you there? Conrad, can you hear me? Mr. Peterson. Can we go on to the next? Panel of PMs. Okay. There's panel PMs before that. She's not in. Yeah, put Chris Mitchell on then. Mr. Mitchell, you there? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you very clearly. Where you go? Well, uh, thank you. Um, I just want to talk about the two issues um, where I disagree with the council's proposal. Um, and these are the uh, abolition of the community boards uh, and the mix of uh, ward and uh, district-wide councillors. And I just want to start with a couple of contextual issues, uh, one of which I think is, is quite important for, for the exercise you're carrying out and um, it somewhat surprisingly isn't reflected in the material, and that's just revisiting the purpose of local government. Um, you know, you're, you're a creation, obviously, as is every council of uh, the statute, and the purpose of local government, that um, uh, I read it very, very quickly for you, is to enable democratic local decision-making and action by and on behalf of communities. Um, so I, I think that should be a reference point uh, in this sort of exercise. The second contextual point is uh, the feedback that council itself provided in that, in that uh, helpful wee, wee booklet, um, where it says to the community, um, you want a democratic model that brings you closer to your elected uh, representatives and decision makers. And I, I think that's a, that's, a good, uh, that's a good pause point too. So moving from there to community boards, I think the first thing to acknowledge is that currently they don't work well. Um, and there's probably a spectrum there from uh, working very badly or not at all to, you know, I, I don't claim to be an expert. What I do know from around the country is that is that, that that's not necessary. Um, community boards can and do work well uh, as an important part of the democratic process in a number of councils uh, in New Zealand. Uh, and the reasons for failure are, are varied, but uh, unfortunately they often come back uh, uh, to the council itself, uh, and, and uh, because relationships, like any relationships, take work, uh, and there also needs to be discussions about, well, what are we going to delegate, and what do we expect in return uh, from community boards? So I, I think more effort should have been done there before uh, dismissing them as a waste of time, and I think getting rid of them is, is counter to those uh, democratic principles that I just alluded to before. Uh, the second point is the mix of uh, ward and uh, district-wide councillors, uh, and I don't mean this as a criticism of any yeah, any councillors, but um, I think you've got the worst of both worlds there. Um, in some situations, very compact uh, urban settings, an at-large situation may work perfectly well, uh, but Kapiti Coast, uh, along with many other sort of mid-sized councils in New Zealand, has 
a social geography and a diversity of communities that is perfectly well set up for a ward system. But when you have uh, 50 odd thousand people represented by five ward councillors, you're making it extraordinarily difficult for the ward councillors to um, fulfil that obligation. I mean, in Waikanae, for example, with 12,000 people, uh, Jocelyn Pravanov does a terrific job, uh, but it, it's simply unfair, I think, to expect one councillor to cover an area where many, uh, uh, many local authorities in New Zealand are actually smaller than that. Um, and if you had two or three ward councillors, which on a population basis uh, would be the case in Waikanae, I think you'd get a much more constructive uh, and helpful engagement for your decision making. So I think there, that, that choice, uh, you know, it's been given six years and it just, to, to me and my experience, it hasn't, it hasn't worked. And as I say, that's not a criticism of the other councillors, but there needs to be a closer relationship between the electors uh, and the elected if you really want to fulfil those uh, contextual points I was talking about before. So, yeah, that's really all, about, <laughs> that's really all I want to say. Uh, I know you've got a big queue, so um, thank you and, yeah, good luck in your... Um, Good luck in your deliberation. Just, just hang in there, Chris. There might be some questions. Any questions? Jocelyn Provenoff, who's doing a terrific job. She is, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Through you, Mr Mayor, and thank you, Chris, very much for your um, submission and speaking today and for your commendation. So um, I just want to ask you, um, when you talk about district-wide councillors versus ward councillors, from your experience, how do they work in this district? Do they um, work both work effectively or um, not so much? Yeah, uh, not so much. I mean, I, all, all I can go on is, is, uh, is, is uh, I suppose, visibility, uh, community visibility. I mean, th there may be district-wide councillors who, who live in Waikanae. I, I don't know. Um, and, and maybe they're very active in Waikanae, although I haven't seen it. So uh, my suspicion is that the, the idea of councillors who stand aside from the if you like, the parochial interests of a ward and, and, and are free to take a district-wide view is actually is actually not what the Act's about, not, not what local government's about. Um, I think the purpose implies that as elected members, apart from the mayor, you are somehow tethered to your communities. That's who you're representing. Uh, and and that's, that's where the work in, in democracy needs to go. I, I don't think we need half the council being people who sit up like a sort of senate <laughs> and looking at the big picture. Uh, I don't think that's how local government should be structured unless the social geography lends itself to that and it doesn't in company. Thank you. Those mm -hmm. comments are very useful. So I suppose also too with district-wide councillors, they can come from any part of the district and as it happens, there's only one councillor of any type in Waikanae. And so that is the... You know that is one of the concerns that um, when you have free-ranging councillors, that some areas may miss out. So, do you have any thoughts on that at all? Well, well it is it, it is a risk, and and um, y yes, look, all I can do is say it's 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 it's, it's obviously a risk. Um, but I mean, if you turn it around and look at, at the council's proposal, which is to basically amalgamate the urban but still distinct areas of Waikanae and Aoparam and Raumati into, into one single ward, uh, you, you know, you still have a risk that all of the councillors may come from one uh, or you know, just, just one of those distinct communities. Um, and, and again, I, I, you know, I can only reiterate, I, I don't think that's consistent with the idea of good, effective community-led representation. It's, it's too big. They, they are diverse communities. Um, yeah. Thank you. Right. Um, Councillor McCann. Kia ora. I'm coming from you, coming to you from my Senate seat. Um, <laughs> I, I'm just curious, and, and I say that in, in chest, but one of the things that we're seeing here is that debate about localism and re reflecting back what your community wants. 
So I'm wondering, and I just want, um, I'm interested in your answer. When councillors are provided with significant information, pages and pages of reading, how do we balance that when it doesn't, uh, you know, effectively rubber stamp what a local community could want because there are other factors in place? So how does that work with the localism that you're promoting? Yeah, look, I, I, I would answer it this way, and it's, it's probably a limited answer, but localism is important. I, I think it is, as I said, at the key of things, but nevertheless, you're, the governance group of a much larger entity. Um, so whether you're a ward councillor or not, you always have to look uh, at the Kapiti Coast and its council as, as, as a whole. I mean, I mean, you're not just there as, as kind of a purely parochial representative like around a bargaining table, but, but you do bring to the table uh, that deep understanding of your community. And, and I suspect it's very difficult or, or far more difficult, I don't know what your experience is, for, for a councillor elected at large to be across some of the micro issues that... Um, that, that are important to communities. But, but yes, it is, it is a difficult balancing act and, and I, I wouldn't pretend to preach on that for a moment. It, it is hard. Oh, thank you very much. Right, um, Chris, that's about no other question. So thank you very much for the time you've taken to present to us. Thank you. We got Conrad. Comrade, Conrad. Conrad, are you there? Have you, can you unmute yourself? Conrad, you there? Right, you, we had him then he's gone. Hi Conrad, um, there's something, we can't hear you in the meeting room so is there something on your computer that you can... Have you got any help with you there? We're not able to hear you. He's going full thing. That's right. And we've got Penelope Eames. Well, have you got Penelope? Yeah, put her on then. Rob McCann, you um, Penelope, you there? Penelope? Penelope, can you hear me? Penelope, can you hear me? Who else have you got? The lottery. Jenny Rowan. Well, who's anybody? You know. Oh, your computer's frozen. Right, have we got anybody? Brett Sangster. Brett Sangster. Brad, can you unmute yourself? Can you hear me, Brad? Ground control to Major Brad. Brad, are you there? Brad, oh, Jenny Rowan. Welcome. Jenny, can you hear me? 
Yeah, right, we can hear you. That's good. Jenny. Okay. Yep. Yes. You're on. Yes, thank you. Thank you, um, Mayor Guru. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity to submit on this um, important matter and a few minutes to be with you. Um, my submission's reasonably clear. I'll just cover off on the three areas as set out there. I have three recommendations at the back for you to consider. Um, I, um, I guess just you've read my submission. I will, I will take it that you've read my submission and the highlights for me are simply um, clearly I found the process very wanting and disappointing and couldn't believe that the community boards have been left out of that uh, process that's seriously uh, undemocratic as, as far as I'm concerned I um, coming into the community boards themselves and their, their survival yet again inside this district uh, that needs to be negotiated. Um, I guess the underpinning theory for me is this, not, this is not about bureaucracy, it's about a democracy, a democratic process. These, these boards were set up to bring that grassroots, con, grassroots connection through to council laws, through to the council table. I think that has, on the whole, worked quite well here in Carpety. I know more than most the frustrations of trying to manage four community boards in my time. It was simply not easy, but that doesn't detract from the fact that that linkage is there. And of course, being here in Paikokariki, we have a very, we've had a series of very um, excellent operating community boards, which have really helped this community move along in its relationship to the matters around it and to the council. So I'm totally opposed to the removal of the community boards. I'm not opposed to the fact that you may need to review how many you want or how you make them work efficiently. I understand... You need to go further away, Hubert. Yeah. You need to go further away. Okay. Hello? Hello? What's that? Hello? You've been hacked. I've been hacked, Guru. <laughs> uh, I'd like to come back to uh, your your commitment at the last election, Mayor mm. Guru, to um, perhaps look at how you do attract uh, people into that arena and how you might better resource um, that position. But I hope you haven't predetermined your decision. And my sense is that you have as a council, and that's very disappointing. So um, I'd like you to seriously consider that. But I guess the overlying issue for me is that you are looking at massive uh, change uh, anyway coming down the back line with the government's um, review on local government and the three waters possibly being extracted from uh, your, 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 um, your view. And if that happens, and I have a strong sense it's going to, uh, then the whole thing will go, the whole structure as you understand it at the moment and as I do will be on its ear and there will be need for massive um, change inside how we uh, manage our local democratic processes on the ground. Even more reason, I believe, to retain those community boards. The other point for me is iwi representation, and yes, I absolutely appreciate I've gone outside the brief of what this review is about, but for goodness sake, everybody, you have to start thinking somewhere along the lines as to how at least you get three um, iwi entities at this table with voting rights to uh, make the decisions and be a part of making the decisions that go on around your table. Uh, it is, it's simply long overdue that Tangata Whenua don't, um, can't, under our present systems, access um, this particular table. Um, and uh, I guess I will simply keep talking about this probably for a very, very long time until it's sorted, Such just as women's uh, representation has been sorted over the last 20 years. So um, that's, that's simply all I would like to um, say to you, um, 
you this morning, this afternoon, and I refer to my recommendations that you do not pursue any changes at the moment in your review on representation. You don't have to. You can simply say you've had a look at it, and in light of what's coming uh, down the back straight, you will wait. You do not have to make change. I trust that you understand that. Um, I'd like to see uh, on the uh, on a at another level, more formal engagements with EWI as to how we might bring them to the table in the next decade. And definitely, I want you to retain the community boards and uh, more formally engage them um, in the whole review process in the future and to, um, to have the, their input. So thank you for listening. And that's my immediate... Bye comments anyway. Right. Um, Jenny, questions will come up. Can I first say there's uh, no predetermination? I can assure you that. Um, okay. Okay. Councillor McCann. Well, thanks, Jenny. And I was going to say exactly the same thing of Mayor, but phrase it in a question to all those councillors. Put your hands up if you're not predetermined, because we're all sitting here. You've got to put your hand up. <laughs> just, just reminding the Deputy Mayor. We, we're all here sitting listening really intently. Uh, and as you know, having been uh, through these type of processes, we're a little bit locked in with some of the ways in which we can go about it. So we're going through a process. And one of the things that we've uh, talked about is that there are some deficiencies in the current system. And to ask you a question, you've said that we should formally engage with those community boards. How can you suggest that we formally engage with community boards to improve those that um, are not functioning uh, at the top of their game? I'm not, who was that speaking? Councillor McCann. Oh, is that you, Rob? Excellent. Uh, Oh, well, um, looking at the boards that aren't functioning properly, I don't know who have you got there at the moment. I probably could pick them. Um, it has quite a bit to do with who's around the table in the first place. It has a lot to do with... Uh, I would still like to hear from Mayor Guru as to... He was going to empower them and resource them more. I would like to know a little bit more about how that was going to happen. I, when I was, was mayor, I mean, I just went to every community board member, supported the councillor in those meetings, um, made sure that the, the board was attending to, to its business. And some of those boards, that was easy for a couple. It was definitely extremely difficult for another couple of boards. And I suspect it's still the same. <laughs> but it's not the reason to take them out. And um, and you you need to think about you need you've been there long enough, uh, Councillor McCabe, to think about this. So you need to think about how you might come in alongside your boards a bit more to empower them and resource them and see what uh, their their business and agendas are like. I, and I, I, and I totally agree with you, board. but but this yes. process is to ask submitters their questions, not for me to put. Well, that's good, and I you're clearly asking them, and, and that's your job. And by the way. <laughs> You don't have to make any changes in this process either with all that's before you. So as much as you want to be judicial in this, and I'm, I congratulate the council on that, uh, you can also come to a conclusion for the moment to leave things alone until you know in the next 12 months. In fact, I suspect tonight the minister is going to come down with some some definitive directions very, right. very shortly. Um, Jenny, I think so you've got, you've got I would, questions. I'm very concerned. I would be very concerned if you continue to spend money on this process. Jenny, uh, we've got others done. waiting to ask questions. Jocelyn, yes, certainly. Like... Okay, is that it? No. Hold on. Um, good afternoon, Jenny. It's Jocelyn Pavanov here through you, Mr. Mayor. So yes. um, I just want to ask. Um, a question based on your experience in relation to community boards. So obviously there's a proposal on the table that um, potentially will do away with community boards. So um, given your past experience, I'm just interested to know how, um, if they, if, if it does happen that they are um, taken out of um, the equation, 
How effective do you think that um, community groups would be able to represent their communities as is being suggested and have their voice heard and, and make differences around the council table? Uh, thanks for the question, um, Jocelyn. It's an extremely good one because the main reason, one of the main drivers for the community boards coming into place in the first time, which I was actually a part of back in the 80s, was that you had your communities being driven by resident and ratepayer groups and other mostly male um, business interest type groups into the councils. And so one of the principles of bringing the boards into play was to get a broader representation at the ground with different interests. So a concern I would have is if you remove them and unless you as councillors become a lot more and I, and I know you're busy, so don't take this out of context, but a lot more on the ground uh, with your own um, visibility and awareness, and um, uh, then you will start to see uh, specific interest groups coming back into you and into this council uh, before there's been a, a, an opportunity to filter. And, um, you know, you, you actually turn the whole place back to those specific interest groups. Right. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but there's a lot of stuff that can go on before it hits your decks as councillors. Right. Appreciate um, that. Anybody Jenny, else? Thank any you. Questions? No? Thank you. Okay, then. Thank you, Jenny, for the robust exchange. You've been good. And thank you for the time you've taken. Thank you very much. I do wish you all the best. Thanks very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Um, Penelope Ames. Penelope, you there? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you very clearly. Thank you. Where are you going? Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, you'll see in my paper submission that I strongly disagree with all the changes in the brochure. I think the blue um, document is a joke and it's an embarrassment for KCDC. The the changes don't meet the requirements of the Local Government Act, and they appear to ignore the six distinctly different communities of interest that are in the Cavity District. Each of our community in, of interest have their own cultures, which have been seen to be unique. They have their own histories, their own ideologies, their own values, and their own rituals. And most of them are actually fin um, highlighted by geographic boundaries, which also make their cultures more special. It doesn't matter if the culture is a Maori, if it's Pakeha, it's Chinese, it's an arts community. It doesn't matter if those communities of interest are poor or rich. They're all important communities of interest. And it was significant in the document um, produced by for guidelines for, um, for this review that the word community of interest, well, I sort of got sick, sick of seeing it because there was 40 times it was referenced in the first about 50 pages, which showed quite how important to the whole document is the communities of interest. And the document goes on and, and actually completely ignores the local government uh, to promote social, environmental, cultural, and social well-being. It just ignores it. it. That isn't even in there. And that is your fourth of your major uh, purposes of, of living. I would like to suggest a few things that could be done which may make things easier in the long run. The first one is to abide by the 2002 local government and acknowledge the well-beings and support the community's interests. I suggest to provide one, one councillor for Raumati, one for Paikokariki, one for Tihoro, one for Otaki, two councillors for Waikanae, and two councillors for Paraparam. They would leave two other councillors. One should be Māori. We should make access for it now and have it ready. But the other councillor should be represent the rural people of this region who are not otherwise represented. Recognising that the, the that community of interest is our second thing. You must have that and notice as the document from local government commission says, you must recognize the geographic and the cultural field 
um, factors that design boundaries. You should restore Waikanae. Penelope, you, you need to sum up now. So this is the, there's, there's two little things here. One, you've got Thank to return you. Waikanae. And the secondly, you should uh, abolish the councillors at large. They're not responsible um, to the electorate and they don't, we don't see them, we don't meet with them. And I believe the whole 10 of the councillors should represent people. Thank you. Um, any questions? District councillors, district wide councillors? No? Um, Panel B, thank you very much for the time that you've taken to submit to us. Much appreciated. Thank you. Right. Who have we got next? Brett Sangster, you there? Brett? I am. Well, yep, we can hear you clearly now. Where you go? Thank you. Kia ora tato. My name is Brett Sangster. I live at Paraparamu Beach. I have a long career involved with community engagement and communication. I'm supportive of Council's review of community representation structures and processes, and I believe that this review must aim to protect and enhance Council democracy and citizen involvement in decision making. Uh, Council must recognise and embrace diversity in its communities, not just by location, such as the um, a district of villages, but also by the interests and how people prefer to share those interests with each other. Uh, for example, uh, mana whenua, tangata whenua, property owners, tenants, the old, the young, immigrants, people with English as a second language, people with young families, LGBTQI+, plus, and those sorts of people. The objectives of replacing community boards and ward elected councillors with other forms of engagement are sound, uh, provided those replacements are well considered, robust, and most importantly, well resourced by council. A district of villages is a heartwarming objective but I believe it potentially creates divisions or perceptions of divisions and grievances between those villages. Um, stories of haves and have nots, if you will. Community engagement done well is a carefully planned, constant and iterative process. It should be the place where councils go first rather than last. It should be something that councils do because they want to not because some statute says they have to. It's okay to go slow, to go fast. And getting things right from the beginning of a project reduces expensive risks, such as time in court at the end. Thank you for your attention. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have about my submission. Right. Any questions for Brad? Councillor Bravanov. Through you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Brett, for your submission and speaking today. So I, um, I note that you are strongly um, in favour of combining the Paparamu and the Waikanae Community Boards, but yet you're wanting, um, or you're suggesting that the community should be well represented. So um, I'm just wondering how that would, you know, how that potentially would work um, when there is a potential that no um, councillors may be elected from Waikanae. Yeah, I think that comes back to um, having um, councillors understanding what their what their roles are. I don't think at one level you don't. I don't think you have to actually live in Waikanae to be an effective representative. Um, I think we've heard oh, several times I, today that... there are mechanisms today, operations, that allows it to keep its finger on the Waikanae pulse. So I think we've heard today when, when oh, other right. presenters have been asked that they have not seen district-wide councillors in the Waikanae ward. 
So I'm just wondering, um, and also it, sort of, it leads it up to chance as well, rather than knowing than knowing that it, that there's going to be at least or could be at least particularly one councillor in an area. Um, yeah, yes, I would. I, I don't. I don't understand your question. I'm sorry. So if um, Paraparam and, and Real Mati, sorry, if, if Paraparam and Waikanae are combined, there yes. are, with the current um, proposal, there are three um, council um, councillor positions. There's no guarantee that, well, I suppose either um, Waikanae or Paraparamu will have an elected councillor living in their area. And right. as I said, we've heard that um, um, it's really important to have that local knowledge. That's it, assuming that the person who's who's elected uh, to represent Waikanae is is, is able um, to do that effectively. And you know, this comes back, I think, to the support that um, council or community engagement needs to have at an executive level, as as well as in in the form of elected representatives. And it, it shouldn't be all pushed back, you know, a running, uh, to use your example, Waikanae. Right, uh, I, need, I need to move this along. We've yes, got sure. a question from Councillor Hanford. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much for your submission, Brett. Just a couple of questions and also wanting to highlight something that you mentioned in here, which I think is really great about the focus on diversity and you've really clearly outlined the different groups that you feel are hard to reach. And so thank you for actually being really kind of practical about about you know your approach to this and your submission and also kind of another practical point which I'd love you to expand on is you mentioned that community boards should be removed and re replaced with more effective measures and I would love for you to talk a bit more about what you think those more effective measures could be because obviously we can't kind of make way for the new unless we kind of remove something that maybe doesn't work as well as it could so what do you think are the opportunities through doing that I'd love for you to um, expand on it yeah well I can talk I, I could talk for hours about that um, you know, there's a you know the toolbox of uh, for community engagement measure, uh, measures is vast, and um, a lot of it comes back to um, what I would describe are, are the tools that you may use for sort of businesses, council business as usual, are probably different to the ones if you've got a specific issue in play. Um, you know, for example, the um, you know the gateway centre is as 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 one example. You know, you probably use different tools in terms of managing your engagement with um, communities around a project than you do around uh, normal um, a council business. Um, and again, the tools that you're going to need, I'm pleased that you brought up the, the list of, of hard to reach people. And again, the tools that you're going to use, the, uh, there's not going to be one tool that allows you to reach all of those groups. And um, you know they all interact differently. Um, they've got uh, different expectations, um, and they carry um, a whole bunch to use a, a term baggage um, around different things. Right. Thank you, Brett. So, I've got um, yeah, that's, another question. Yeah, it's not an easy answer to give. I'm no, sorry. Thanks, Brett. That was that was great. We've got thanks another so question for Councillor Elliot. Um, good morning. Um, thank, oh, afternoon. Thank you very much, Brent, um, for your. Uh, submission. Councillor Hanford has asked my question for me um, but I just wanted to take the opportunity to say yes, um, I have read and referred to the significance and engagement policy often. It is really important for us to know. Um, yep. I want to thank you for your very refreshing global views and I want to ask you if you could follow up with us and just put some of your ideas down in writing and send them through to email to us. Thank you. It will be appreciated. Sure, happy to do that. Thank you. Right. Thank you, um, Brad, for your for the time you've taken to engage with us. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, the next one is Richard Mansell. Is that right? Hello. Uh, I realise I'm the last person between you and uh, lunch, so I shall keep this brief. Um, a lot of more articulate people have uh, been on before me, and I've read quite a few submissions. And they uh, say quite a few of the things in a more clear and intelligent way. So I'll, I'll be quick. Um, I fully admit that uh, my uh, views are based on gut 
and passion, but I think um, they they back up the people who are a bit more reasoned than me. So first of all, I'd like to talk about the Waikano Award because uh, that's that's my passion. Um, to me, representation is about having someone you know and can get in front of uh, represent the area that you care about. Uh, and for me, that's Waikano. Um, each of those representatives obviously need to represent an, an, a roughly equal amount of people. Uh, for Waikanae, I think Waikanae is distinctly different from Paraparami. Uh, it's geographically split. Uh, there's a, probably an eight to ten minute drive through farmland either way to get to the next town. Um, the demographics are definitely different in Paraparami uh, to Waikanae uh, and Ōtaki as well. Uh, we also, Mike and I have about 25% of the population, um, which is why I believe the Waikano Ward is so important. Uh, it's been underrepresented for the past six years, um, but I don't see that the solution to underrepresentation is to abolish it completely. Um, I've seen a, a few solutions proposed, and I think the one that comes closest to, to meeting uh, what I would think would be better representation model was the small wards model, where uh, there were seven ward-based councillors elected, um, meaning you had three district-wide ones. Uh, I don't see that the district-wide ones offer much. Uh, I know there was a comment that uh, you get a better candidate quality of candidate from district-wide, but I have seen no proof of that, um, either in the people who are working on it at the moment, c compared to the people who are working as a ward councillor, or even just in sort of data from the country. Um, and unfortunately, the, the way the materials read uh, as they came through was that you decided that you wanted this ward and district split, and then tried to shoehorn the wards w within the um, the five people that you had for making a ward. And the only way you could do that was to destroy Waikanae. Um, on the community boards, uh, as you will know, I was voted on to the local community board late last year and took up its, uh, my position in February. And I would concede that there is a view that Waikanae Community Board uh, has issues. I'll put that politely. But having read some of the other submissions, I can see that community boards do work in Kapiti. And what's more, they do a lot of uh, work for their communities. So I think uh, from the submissions I've read that probably the biggest handbrake on community boards is the mandate that they're given to operate under. And that mandate actually comes from council rather than from the community board themselves. So when you get the, um, the don't know what they do comment in your research, um, the issue I see lies at the feet of council because council haven't given them a clear role. So I would say to that, that you need to empower community boards, um, you need to promote community boards, and then you might see the community boards become more respected. Um, I don't believe that doing away with them and replacing them with, uh, what were they described as, fora, and undefined council picked community groups uh, is going to improve representation at all. And the, my last um, comment that I want to make is, uh, it was um, entitled threat, but I changed that to a word of caution. At the council meeting where you approved the consultation process, Councillor McCain talked about responding to threats when making this decision. Um, I don't, I, I'm, I can almost guarantee that councillors are aware of the depth of feeling in this community. Um, and as such, appeals are likely to be made to local government New Zealand. And so when you're looking at, at what you um, have to decide about what good representation is, you actually need to base your decision on their standards rather than your own. So I shall leave that because you've all got sandwiches out the back and um, happy to take questions. So obviously there's, given the lunch is coming, there are no questions? No. <laughs> um, we've got Councillor McCann. 
Kia ora through you, Mr Mayor. Uh, obviously, uh, knowing that many of your formative years were spent in Otahanga, uh, which falls into Parapara Umu, um, one of the th questions I've got with you is that we're obviously responding to local governments um, reporting to us that why can I that we haven't met the plus minus criteria. So what, you were quite correct um, that there is an issue. Do you see that one of the potential options is that we actually go back to local government New Zealand and say, look, we responded to what you wrote and the community have rejected it and so we're going to thereby ignore the plus or minus rules because this is a community of interest and they've told us so, as have, um, having read all the submissions, quite a number of people throughout the whole region. I think the best chance you've got of better representation is to do away with some of your district-wide councils. Um, uh, the the small, or not even just the small wards, but you can you can get closer to better representation, and by that I mean you know someone you can get in the face of who has a, a passion about your own district. Um, I think you can get around that by using some of your district-wide councillors. Uh, Wike and I, I think, would be most upset if they were left at uh, the 26% underrepresented that they are at the moment, um, uh, and that could probably be fixed. By the way, I was born in Padabaramu, shifted to Wike and I, spent 20 years there, and then, then had to suffer, suffer 20 years in Otahanga. So you're really a member of Kapiti, uh Inc, which a good district councillor like me represents, but that's not really a question. Hey, thank you very much. Right, who's next? Councillor Compton. Um, thank you. Through the Mayor, um, I think you've raised a lot of interesting points in your submission, Richard, and I wanted to pick up in your discussion about district-wide councillors, and it's not just because I am one, but specifically I don't know if you've had a look back through some of the options that were presented two councillors earlier in this process and whether you'd seen the, the small ward model that would have um, had seven ward only councillors and Wike and I would have been ended up covered by two councillors in that scenario and I wondered what you thought of an option like that so you'd have smaller wards more geographically focused um, and you'd have actually a, a closer match in terms of the uh, the plus or minus 10% I think it all comes in underneath that rule in terms of the local government commission as well. I was interested in your thoughts on that, given that you're sort of um, suggesting that we might uh, get rid of some or all of the district-wide councillors. Uh, well, I happen to have it open on my computer because uh, I, that's the one that attracted my attention the most. Um, and that was the one I was referring to. You could get, I think they talk about having seven district-wide uh, um, ward councillors, each representing about 8,100 people. Uh, and if you stick with your 10, then you can have three district-wide councillors. Um, I, I really, I've seen very little evidence that a district-wide councillor does much, uh, and that may be offensive, but I've sat in how many? Four or five uh, community board meetings, and I've only seen one district councillor there, district-wide councillor there. Um, if they were really district-wide, they might have turned up to one. Um, or taken turns to have one district-wide councillor at each Waikanae Community Board meeting. Um, they, they're, un they're not accountable to anybody. They're just sort of like a list MP. Right, um, Councillor Coots. Kia ora, Richard. Um, look, at the start of your um, speaking to your submission, you made the comment about um, that there are issues with community boards or something to that effect were, were the words that you use. What do you see as the solution to if community boards are retained um, to resolving those issues within the community boards that you refer to? Um, and I guess there's a, a sub-comment to that around what do you see as the, uh, the resources required, I think was another comment that you made around supporting them. Uh I can only go from my experience on Waikanae Community Board and, and bringing into it my experience as a business person and you go into those meetings and they're just it's like a mini council meeting and but 
we we do when we vote we vote to accept something we don't vote to do anything um, there must be a way that you can empower the, the community boards to actually do something to make a decision um, so that in the community if they want something done uh, they come to their community board and the community board can do it all we can do is send a, a politely worded memo to the chief executive or, or words to that effect um, we've got no power uh, and if we've got no power you'd almost say why well, have them but you have them because they're an elected uh, representative rather than the, the hand picked ones that were alluded to but not detailed uh, resources it would depend on what you want them to do but, but yeah, they need to be resourced um, all right. Thanks, um, Richard. Thank you very much. I think uh, no other questions. Thank you for the time you've taken to give us your thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Right. I think it's it's um, our Conrad has been rescheduled, right? Conrad Patterson. Yeah. Okay. Right. So um, lunch time. We're already about thirty-five minutes behind. Forty minutes. Um, Lunch break. Do you want to start on time or do you want to start late so that we can ask? Well, we've got people waiting. Yeah, we've also so got staff. Staff, on, staff yeah. on time. So we need to sort of grab a bite very quickly. Um, it says um, quarter past no, what? So you're due back in 20 minutes. At, well, the, first, the, the next submission is at 1.30, which is in 20 minutes. I think we can do... One thirty-five, let's say. One thirty-five. We don't actually do very much. I've, I've got a, um, some considerations for looking at those all taking at five o'clock. So yeah. I've told them I might be able to do it. Right, one thirty-five. I'll do just me. Two thirty. I've got something, but um, Janet will sit. So what we what we'll do, um, Mr. Mayor, for the next round is we'll ding the bell when people have got thirty seconds to go, but mm. you'll need to speak over the top and tell them that that's but thirty seconds. But they should be to go. able to. Yeah, they, didn't. they should be able to, but um, depending on when they come into the waiting room, they might yeah. not know that there is a ding, cool. so you'll need to, you'll need to do that. Okay, so we, we come back just um, 1.35. So, feed, feeding frenzy. <laughs> <laughs>